Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and today we're going to talk about Total War Warhammer. But this time we won't be looking towards a new faction or a new DLC. This time we're actually going to go back and look at a possible rework to a faction. One of my favourites in both lore and on the tabletop. These are the Beastmen who unfortunately aren't very fun at the moment in Total War Warhammer because they really need a rework. So I've taken the time and spoken to a few fans of the Beastmen to see what a good rework could actually be. Naturally, these are the opinions and thoughts of myself and other Beastmen fans, and it's really unknown on what Creative Assembly have planned. So without further ado, let's begin. The Beastmen are a Horde faction, and I believe we can all universally agree that Horde factions are currently not very fun to play in Total War Warhammer, and the Horde system requires a massive overhaul. However, I believe that the Horde factions should not actually be reworked universally, or else each Horde faction would play exactly the same. The Beastmen are fast-moving skirmisher-type armies, so they wouldn't play exactly the same as, say, for example, the Warriors of Chaos, who are very slow and heavy hitters. But with that being said, let's look at the ideas that people had come up with. First, the Beast Path system. This should actually make the Horde completely invisible as they travel unless passing by nearby enemies. This would represent the nature of the Beastmen where they're a very sneaky army, they would actually hide away in the shadows waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Very similar to how they encamp, but they should also be able to move. Rather than just being able to move their full movement, call it more in the sense of being able to move half their range, but completely invisible. Naturally, if they get too close to an enemy army or a settlement, they would be revealed and there would probably be a battle shortly after. But it would be very interesting to play as a very pure stealth-like faction which only strikes when the time is right. Or when the Beast Gore loses his mind and charges in mindlessly. Next, we look towards the Dark Moon events. The Dark Moon events right now appear every 7 turns, giving you random bonuses and negatives. However, it should be reworked to also include quests. Say, for example, the 90% unit cost reduction would be very cool, but maybe you have to actually sack a settlement belonging to a specific race to actually get that. This would work as a new sort of quest system to be implemented. Every time the Dark Moon rises, the Bray Shamans would have to try and interpret why. It would give Beastmen more of a reason to actually explore throughout the world, instead of just staying in the same locations at all times. How this could work is that the system could actually still have the bonuses and the negatives, however if you actually complete a quest it would remove the negative. This would give the player more incentive to pick more fights and actually play like a Beastman in the lore. Now we look towards Bestial Rage and the Bray Herd system. Bestial Rage can be gained in a number of ways, such as winning battles and raiding, and is also lost by animosity, entering your hidden camp stance, or losing a battle. Yeah, this works out quite well, but there could be a few other ways to actually make it more interesting. Say, for example, quests popping up that would actually give you more Bestial Rage if you completed it in time, and maybe a minor negative if you didn't complete it whatsoever. Now, I'm not saying these would be 5 turn quests, but maybe like 20 turns or something like that. Enough time to actually let you get down there and do what you have to do. Getting enough bestial rage will naturally lead to the arrival of a Bray Herd. The Bray Herd system is currently not very fun. It's more of a nuisance than anything else. Sure, they sometimes spawn with quite a nice stack of units, and sometimes the stacks aren't really that good. However, that's not really the problem. It's the fact that it becomes a separate faction to you, which can sometimes be unpredictable. It won't follow you around as it's supposed to. It'll actually every now and then just pop out and attack something that was close, rather than follow you. This has been very frustrating on a number of occasions when you plan on the Bray Herd following you and then it will just disappear, leaving you exposed. There's also been a few bugs where sometimes it will travel close to you and take you out of hidden encampment stance. That can be a massive problem which can see your campaigns actually ending much quicker than you had anticipated. Instead, the Bray Herds should actually spawn for the player and be player controlled. But rather than randomly spawning high tier units, it should instead spawn low level gores and ungores. This would represent the herd itself getting stronger and stronger and more famous throughout the other herds. Many lesser beastmen would naturally be attracted to this and want to join the winning side. This would just be for early game however. There should be a new branch to the tech tree dedicated to the upgrading of the Bray Herds. Nothing too complex, and of course it's not going to spawn like 20 stack Saigor armies, but it should be usable at least. This tech tree branch should pretty much focus around the same way that it does for the Chaos Corruption one, where it not only reduces your research rate, but also costs cash. 
with the big difference being that it shouldn't be one turn researchers, instead they should be a number of turns each just to upgrade, or else it would be way too easy to spawn high level armies quite quickly. These player controlled Bray herds should also act as normal herds, so they still upgrade, build units and so on. Now this mechanic should also have restrictions, so the tech tree itself, as you work your way down it, it also increases the amount of Bray herds you can actually spawn in or else it would just be way too easy to cheese the game too. So say for example at the beginning you can only have one extra Bray Herd spawn in, and with every tech that you work your way down to upgrade the Bray Herds you can also spawn in more. Maybe with a maximum limit of 5 Bray Herds, that would actually be quite decent, you're basically getting 5 armies for free. We're not going to talk about new units and new lords here because I think that warrants its own video as I'd like to go into depth about a lot of new lords that could be possible. But on a side note, if anyone from Creative Assembly is actually listening to these videos, uh, Jabba's Life, please. Just a Jabba's Life. Everything else is cool too, but I would really like a Jabba's Life. But now let's move towards the last point of this video, which is something that I just came up with recently. The Beastmen are a horde faction, which means that they don't actually occupy any settlements. Instead, they move around in their encampments, which are called herdstones. But what if the Beastmen actually had settlements to occupy? Four, to be exact. These would be the Great Herdstones, Four different areas in the map, which are the only settlements that could be occupied by the Beastmen. Very similar to how Norska currently can only occupy either coastal cities or cities of great prestige, so any big capitals. These great herdstones would be separated in four points of the map, so for example one of them in Athaloran, covering the area of the Old World, one in the Southlands, probably Kemri, one in Lustria, maybe one of the Temple Cities, and one in the far north, maybe Nagarond? These would not be walled settlements, instead they would actually work in a very similar way to how the Wood Elf ones work, where they have no walls but they have very powerful garrisons. Controlling these great herdstones would also give you faction-wide bonuses, so you'd probably want to leave an army there too to defend it. With each of the herdstones being possibly dedicated to one of the Chaos Gods, it might make it a little bit more interesting and give it a little bit of a lore flavour. This would give the Beastmen a massive incentive to actually travel around the Warhammer world and not stay around the same locations. But before we end this video, I've actually just thought of something else. There should be a few changes. Malagor needs to be his own faction, because he's currently in Kazrak's army. His starting location's perfectly fine. Kazrak needs to be moved though, he should not be in Astalia, he should be in the northern reaches of the Empire trying to hunt for Boris Toddbringer. And instead the Shadowgave should be moved down to Astalia, giving him direct access to a route to Athaloran. But with that my friends, I believe that's pretty much everything to make the Beastmen a bit more interesting. But what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and let's start a little bit of discussion. You guys probably have some ideas too, considering that the Beastmen have been out for quite some time, and I would love to hear other people's thoughts and opinions on this race. But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like, or even subscribing to the channel, as it really does help us out. In the description section below, we have various links to social media platforms such as Facebook, Discord, and Instagram, where you can get in contact with the Great Book team and talk to us about Total War Warhammer, lore, or pretty much anything, really. Also in the description below is an affiliate link with Element Games, where you could buy loads of Warhammer-based stuff and hobby-based stuff for 10-25% to off. Using our special link and also using our special code, which is also in the description, also supports the channel with no extra cost to you. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us. Honestly, it's really cool that people want to help a small channel grow and get to a higher level of content. We're trying our best, guys. A big thank you to our patron Gibraltar LUSC for subscribing to us at our fame level. Honestly, mate, you're super cool and we can't thank you enough. And a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing, and commenting on the videos. Honestly, it's amazing to be able to talk to so many Warhammer fans, like, worldwide. It's, it actually blows my mind. The channel is going through a massive spike lately, and we don't understand why, but we're just enjoying the fact that we're being able to talk to so many Warhammer fans. It's actually amazing. But with that, my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very, very soon. Have a good day.